Hi, my name is Chukuma Aligwekwe, but everybody calls me Chiko. Uh, I think it works because uh, saying my surname can be a bit of a tongue twister. Currently, I'm the program director for Classic FM. I also do the drive time show. So, radio, some say, came first. But yeah, dabbling into, into film and TV is something that's always been a dream of mine. In fact, many people don't know that I actually studied theater arts and then went on to study film and media. So some of my peers from uni in Nigeria here see me and they say, oh, finally, you've decided to join us. And so it's like, yeah, it's a new adventure and really exciting. Doesn't mean that I don't love or that I love radio any less because I think radio is a, a natural home for me. I love that connection and that voice that you have that can bring change. Wow, I can't remember the last time I was asked this question and so all these memories are flooding back. I think I'd be, I'd be spot on if I said I had a difficult childhood because it's not easy as a, young, as a young child being moved, uprooted from England and everything you know and then being brought back to Nigeria where we couldn't speak the language, we had problems adjusting to the new educational system, we had uh, blisters on our bodies, the doctor said it was change of climate, we weren't used to the climate and so there were all these blisters. And it was very difficult, people took poked fun at us for not being able to speak Igbo at the time. You know, so it was quite tough and it took me a while to adjust and I think, uh, I think I rebelled a lot because I always wanted to go back to England uh, so, um, but was stuck here through secondary school and university. So the minute I dropped, it was four days after I dropped my pen from my degree exams that I was back in England. Uh, well, first degree in Nigeria, I went to Unical and Uniport. And then when I went back to England, I studied at the University of North London. That's where I did film and media. Wow, that's a really hard question. If I wasn't a broadcaster, I'd be a full-time actor. There you go. Probably a novelist too, because I do a lot of writing. Um, I'm, I'm working now doing some publishing of my works and I'd also like to do my own film projects. So I'm working with my sister, we have a brilliant story, so watch this space. Um, what I'd say is that with the advent of, of commercial radio, it has had that effect where standards have dropped uh, and there's so many because if you've got the budget you can set up a radio station and you might not have the I'm being very careful let's let's see let me put it in a different way okay so there are loads of radio stations some are at the top of the food chain others aren't and then you've got loads of people who see the glamour in radio Yes, it's glamorous from the outside, but the truth is radio doesn't pay well. So it's going to attract a lot of characters who ordinarily shouldn't be doing radio. Now, I do some training. I, I, I work with an academy where we, we train potential broadcasters. And one of the things I say to them all the time is that there are the Ronaldos of broadcasting and, and, and there are the Messies. And the difference is that the Ronaldos are not naturals. They have to train themselves constantly. And the messies are naturals. They come alive when you open the microphone. Unfortunately, not a lot of broadcast houses make this distinction and they're just throwing people in there. And it works because the majority of the audience are sometimes not that savvy and so they, can't, they don't get found out. But radio stations at the top of the food chain will not hire a majority of the people whose voices I hear on the radio. My most notable holiday has to be Cape Town. I tell you what, I actually really considered relocating to Cape Town. And I was offered a job by a radio station. 
I thought about it very seriously. This was in, I think it was 2014. Um, sadly, it was around the time that there was the xenophobia attacks going on, and I think that played a part in my decision. But I was very, very close to moving. I love Cape Town uh, as a holiday destination, and I can actually see myself living there. Um, I've also had the most wonderful holidays in Dubai. I'm not going to mention London because London is like home, so it's never really a holiday going to London, even though I can't go a year without going back there. But yeah, Cape Town and Dubai, I'd recommend it for anyone.